Hey. Hello, can you see me? I can. Excellent. Hi. Hi. We're just waiting for Kat now. She should join us any second. Yay! Oh, she's there. Hi. Hello. I'm a bit closer. You both are bigger than me. <laughs> oh, are you wearing ghosty earrings? I love it. Yes, I've got knife in one ear and ghost face in the other. Very yeah. nice. Only seemed right. <laughs> an eye on her necklace. I need to up my game. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to this live chat today. We are joined by Kat and Amy and myself. I'll introduce myself quickly and then I'll ask you guys to introduce yourself. So I'm Dawn Kertigich. I'm the author of The Dead House, The Creeper Man and Teeth in the Mist, which is the latest. And um, they're basically about angry, haunted girls who get into a lot of trouble um, and perfect for spooky season. So that's me. Amy, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, um, I'm Amy McCaw. I'm the author of Mina and the Undead and the sequel Mina and the Slayers, which just came out. Uh, Mina and the Undead is set in summer, New Orleans, 1990s. Um, Mina goes to visit her sister and ends up getting pulled into a murder mystery, which may or may not involve vampires um, and local New Orleans myths. Um, it was a lot of fun to write. And then the sequel is set at Halloween a few months later. And Mina's getting all mixed up with the police in this one, as well as the slayers of the title. And there they are. Thank you, Kat. I don't have my own books handy, but you have them. That's excellent organisational skills. <laughs> How about you, Kat? Yes, um, I am Kat, Kat Ellis. Um, I write creepy YA horror thrillers, including Harrow Lake and Wicked Little Deeds, which basically are about uh, young girls getting into very spooky, creepy situations and having to sort of figure things out, solve mysteries and cope with random monsters and death. Highly recommend all of those, such spooky reads. We've got the, the Red Book of Blood from Mina and the Undead. We've got the Purple Book of, hmm, I don't know, Rainbows? Skit <laughs> And Halloween got, murkiness, um, I think, like with yeah. the mist and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got the yellow book of evil from Kat. I'm not going to wave them all again. <laughs> oh, I love the solid colours of all these. <laughs> <laughs> and yours are very black, which I think, think is appropriate, you know. Yeah. Black with beautiful girls on the front. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, they tend to put girls on my covers, don't they? Yeah. I'm not angry about it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be. So, as I wave this beautiful cover again, Amy, can you tell us a bit about the second instalment for those who have read uh, Mina and the Undead and tell us what's in store for those who've enjoyed it? Yeah, thank you. So the mission statement for this one was the same as Scream 2. I wanted it to be bigger, bloodier, death scenes more elaborate. And the first book was already quite elaborate and bloody, so I had to push <laughs> the boundaries a bit. Um, so as I said, this one, Mina has discovered um, that various supernatural entities are real. I don't think that gives too much away. And she's decided that what she's going to do is volunteer with the police and try and kind of help people in the way that she can. And then she ends up getting mixed up with the Slayers. So before long, she's investigating a mass serial kill with the police. She's investigating a rise in vampire numbers with the Slayers. And of course, all of this is circling closer and closer to her and her family and friends. Um, so yeah, she's just having she's having fun, but she's also having a really bad time. That seems to be the mission statement of my books. I would say definitely achieved. Having read it, it is so <laughs> Thank so good. <laughs> Thank you. What was it like writing the sequel? Because it must be a different feeling to writing the first one. Because with the sequel, people are kind of looking over your shoulder, waiting for it. How was that experience like? It's interesting. So the first book you write, as you two both know, with kind of no expectations because you don't have an agent, you don't have anybody kind of saying it needs to be done by this date and it needs to be this thing. So you kind of just do what you want to do with it. And then the sequel, I'd sort of set the parameters of the world. I'd set the voice and the characters. In some ways, that was great because I just wrote straight away and the Mina's voice was there. The characters were there. I just had to remember kind of who they were. Um, but then the expectation did hover over me a little bit because I thought... What do people like about the first book? Do I need to try and do that again, but do it better, do it bigger? So it does feel like that pressure. I think that's why second books are often difficult because you're under time pressure from the publisher. You're also trying to do, kind of replicate what you did, but also do better. Um, I'd like to think I did that. I think I learned a lot from writing book one. So I think book two is a better book. I think that I did some stuff in book one. I was like, oh, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have done that because <laughs> I could have done something with that character. I could have done something with that. Like there were some things about, um, say, the vampire mythology that I set them in book one. 
and then I had to stick to them which in some ways was good because it was all there but in some ways was bad because it was all there and I kind of couldn't really break my own rules too much um so yeah it was it was great to be able to continue those characters I loved them and I loved the world but it had its kind of downsides as well yeah speaking of characters though you had so many great characters and I loved seeing how the relationships kind of shifted and changed between Mina and her sister and Mina and Jared and the new friends that you introduced for her in this new book what were your favorite parts to write with those relationships and how the dynamics changed I tend to like the bits that publishers sort of would say aren't needed, like the things that don't don't move the plot along in those like in that huge action packed way. So I love the action scenes and kind of building towards a huge climax. But I like those really fun scenes where they're hanging out and they're going to the movies and stuff like that. Like they go in a blockbuster video, they go to this really creepy cinema. I have fun with like the friendships and the interactions and there's always something in those scenes to move the plot on or move the character development but there's not loads of it they're also just having a good time because I think I want it to be kind of a compelling dark murder mystery but I also want it to feel like a light fun read like escapism because I think some thrillers you kind of feel more like your heart's pounding and it's an adrenaline rush but I wanted mine to be kind of that fun thing as well as that um, and I hope I managed to pull it off <laughs> I love the scene with all the clowns. I hope that's not like too spoilery. It's not. It's fine. <laughs> I um, I did feel a little bad though because I remember one reader was like, "I hate clowns. Why did you put an it room in the mansion of the car?" And I was like, "Now I put a whole something to do with clowns." So, it, so what I did, I got around it by putting like a warning on the door, like, "If you don't like clowns, don't come in here." Yeah, that so was... I hope... <laughs> <laughs> it was like my own content warning just built into the narrative. <laughs> Take lessons from this. There's also another element that wasn't there in the first book, which is this like police procedural element because Mina does her work experience with the police. What was that like? Did you have to do super a lot of research for that? Did you watch films to do with police? Because also it's American, it's different to the UK. Yeah. What was that like? I think what people like us, it's kind of quite ingrained into us. Like we've watched so many horror films, thrillers, read them. Like you have this thing in your head, what police procedure is. And then you find out what real police procedure is in the mid 90s and you're like, oh, everything takes months like you'd send off dna a month later it'd come back so i did all the research i researched online i read books but more importantly um i have a friend called hannah cates who's an awesome author she um did work experience with the police not unlike me it's sort of where she um she kind of um, did ride-alongs with them and stuff like that so oh. i talked to her about that but also i talked to her um about like other contacts she might have um and she put me in touch with somebody who used to be a detective in the deep south so he I interviewed him, asked him loads of questions, said to him at the end, I'm really sorry, but I'm not going to be able to do some of that because it's just not going to, I had to go with reality as much as I could. I wanted it to feel believable, but also sometimes I had to change things up. Like she's obviously doing a work experience with a detective. She ends up seeing more than probably a work experience kid would because she's meaner and she throws herself into it head first. Um, and because, you know, she had to, to make it a fun book. So I did the research and then didn't do some of it anyway. <laughs> I believe like we do, you know. You know, it's her own person. It's like the detective's like, stay in the car. And she's like, cool, yeah. I'm just going to get out of the car. <laughs> yeah, she's like, shall I just stand by the car? Oh, the car's a bit hot. I'll just stand a little <laughs> bit away from the car. And then slowly, I'm going to get close to this crime scene. It's not my fault. Like, honestly. She's so, I don't know. I feel like I, I have that curiosity, but I don't have her kind of curiosity at the kind of detriment to your own personal safety like I think she's a bit more maybe me as a teenager um me as a 30 something is like no I'd, I'd just stay in the car Cafty told me to I'm gonna do what Cafty says <laughs> yeah but you know she wouldn't end up in those amazing situations though would she <laughs> yeah I always think that about like if we ourselves as teenagers were the main characters of YA books like what would they be like and teenage me would have just been revising a lot so <laughs> mainly I think it would be a very boring YA book like oh she's revising again then doing an exam oh good <laughs> no it's not great <laughs> Uh, we talked a little bit about covers before, but um, I was wondering how involved were you with like the design <laughs> process for your both of your amazing covers? Um, I was really lucky with that. Um, UCLan kind of said, what covers do I like? What do I want? Um, I ended up, I don't know whether it's handy, um, but basically I sent them a bunch of covers. I think yours was one of them, Dawn, actually. Um, oh, but I, I sent Kendara Blake's cover as well for Anna Dressed in Blood with the girl kind mm. of facing away. And we thought that'd be interesting for Mina because she kind of, 
she can be anyone then she looks like herself but it's not that clear and also we're using short stock images for book one so it's kind of you know it doesn't have to be this beautiful illustrated person because they were just using stock images basically um so they showed me the cover at every step becky the designer decided that it would be red and i was like oh not my favorite color but i love it like i wouldn't have it any other way so some stuff she completely did um and some stuff as a lot of you'll know i think is even watching now but my husband is quite hands-on and helpful in my kind of creative process and he did a mock-up of the second book so we literally said like we want st louis cathedral in the background three girls at the front these are who they are and um you can got a design an illustrator who actually just illustrated um like the whole cover even the back cover um according to what we'd wanted i picked the color um, and he even like he changed some of the stuff for me like at first he put the real trees around and I was like can we make them spooky trees and can we just have a fake graveyard <laughs> at the bottom and he's like yeah because he'd done stuff like that before so it kind of I drew on the stuff that I knew he could do and he he just took on my feedback because you both know me well I'm a bit I kind of don't like to let things go and if I if I've got an idea I want to say it um, and I think you're both quite similar like we, we want things to be perfect so I just kept saying could you try this and could you add this and he just did it all and yeah, I loved it. So I felt lucky that it was really collaborative and it just ended up being, both of them ended up being exactly what I wanted, which was great. And um, I think I've got the illustrator and the designers thank for that because they were just amazing. Yeah, it's unusual to get that much control actually in publishing. That's such a blessing. How So yeah. literally what you pictured with all your sort of adjustments. That's amazing, I love that. With, cause it's got sprayed edges as well, hasn't it? Yeah, so that was Becky's idea, like quite late in the process of book one, she said, I've had this idea and I wanna just try it. We haven't tried this on any books before where they put a black edge on all of the pages. So instead of it being traditionally sprayed, like let's see what look what that'll look like. Will it make the edges dark? It, so we kind of tried it out and I think it worked pretty well cause it does look like sprayed it, edges. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I think it's quite cool to look at the page of the book. I haven't really seen books with like edges like that before, so no. I just thought it was quite fun. It's actually because I'm dyslexic. It actually was very soothing to my. Oh, eyes. really? That's yeah. good. Well, I mean, the response to the series has been amazing. Have you had any cool reader experiences or like fan art or you know fan fiction directed your way? Yeah, it's been interesting. So probably the the ones that stand um, out in my mind, when we were kind of in lockdown, some schools had got hold of the book, but I'd not really spoken to any actual teenagers at this point. And a teacher tagged me in a drawing that somebody had drawn of Lucas in book one. And it kind of looked like one of the American Horror Story characters. And it just sort of drew to pull together like two beautiful things. Like, obviously, he'd been inspired by this character, inspired by the character in my book and just made it his own thing. I loved that. Um, also, I met a reader recently um, called Roxy on Instagram. I think she's called Tattoos, Books, Clues and Reviews or something. But she's she's really lovely. I chat to her quite a lot. And she'd made me the Gur Arg. She'd like cross-stitched it from Buffy. So oh, she cross-stitched a little monster and put Gur Arg. So that was awesome. Um, and also somebody wrote a poem based on, um, at the beginning of book one, Mina admits that she bit somebody when she was a kid because she was dressed as a vampire. And he said vampires weren't real. So to prove it, she bit him. Um, <laughs> And somebody read that when we did the page one reveal and she wrote a poem about Tiny by Tamina, like teaching Billy White a lesson. And I thought that was so cool. Like that somebody obviously who has a, a credible talent at poetry decides to write a poem about my book. So yeah, they're the ones that kind of stand out. I think that's really lovely when you inspire somebody else to do something. Um, one day it's exciting. Coming to you saying, this is my debut novel. And you actually that happened with me. Cynthia told me that sh she was inspired by the dead house. And I'm like, what? So one day you might actually read and an not like an author who read your book and decided to write for themselves. It's so cool. So surreal. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Dawn, it was the same for me. Like, we met at Yalk because I stood in Dawn's, anybody who doesn't know, I stood in Dawn's queue to meet her when the dead house came out. Yeah. Um, book signed and I was queuing for that long I got one of the cupcakes yeah I think you'd got so many cupcakes for the first people and I was there I was like right at the front of the queue um, <laughs> so it's really cool like to be friends now and to kind of I think the, the YA community is like this especially in the UK I think that we all it's hard being an author and it's great how we've all kind of supported each other and given each other ideas and you know done stuff like this together I think it's really lovely and I didn't really expect that when I went into it you kind of think writing would be quite solitary but it's the complete opposite isn't it yeah it's like a family it really yeah. do we have a picture together from that first time I think maybe I 
yeah I, possibly i'll have to i'll have to have a look yeah I we've got more recent pictures um but yeah because i think we had a meet up didn't we um like yeah. i think there were the, there's the big group of us together when we went to gladstones that was ace um Oh, yeah. yeah, and we, maybe we'll have to replicate it if we're ever at Yarg together. I'm sure we will be at some point. We can <laughs> I'll just be like... in your time this time. Yeah, well, we'll take in turns. I'll get in yours after. Oh, I think I... as Shelley just said, she was there. <laughs> that same Yelk. yeah well i think we went um so she i met shelly at your panel i think for the first time like we went and sat in the horror panel um and talked together um i don't know whether we'd only been talking online and then we found it in queued and met you <laughs> afterwards so yeah Yelk is very good at bringing people together oh i know and i haven't been able to go for so long did you go to the last one cat i didn't go to the last one no which i really regret now because obviously i've been able to go for a couple of years <laughs> Yeah, but um, I will definitely be going to the next one because the ones that I'd been to previously, I think I'd been to pretty much every Yelk before that. Um, they've always been amazing, just going there and meeting different authors and stuff. It's yeah. always fun. Oh, I miss it. I'm... We need to do the Gladstones get together again. Yeah. If you guys can make it to Gladstones, maybe <laughs> like it up. <laughs> it actually wasn't as hard as I thought to get there like now that um, my toddler's a little bit older he can cope in the car for that sort of journey and um, there's a nice soft plane in there so daddy and Aww. child can go there and I can write yeah I don't think we should definitely do that again oh I, I would I'm gonna like stay over the next time we do it we've got some comments I don't want to ignore them so I'm just gonna go back if you see any as well cat feel free to read them yeah. out I've just said uh, there is a picture of your first meeting I oh, excellent <laughs> Hi, Kev, as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Charlie says, can we see the idea you sent to the designer for your book? I'd love to see oh. that. I mean, oh, what, as in the one that um, that my husband designed? Yeah. Do you, I should share that at some point on social media. <laughs> I'll have to ask my publishers if I'm allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, it was, it's spooky how much, obviously, the girls, I don't know what they're, I, mean, I think maybe we just put one girl on, but we said we actually wanted three, but we couldn't figure out how to do that. Um but yeah, if I'm allowed to share that, I definitely will. But yeah, the cover um, that I sent as well, it was Anna Dressed in Blood. If you want to look at that, the Kendara Blake book was kind of, I think, the closest one. And also the um, Cassidy Blake books by V. Schwab. I think um, my designer really liked the colour palette of those when I sent them. So I think that kind of inspired her as well. Yeah, yeah Kat, always somebody's complimenting your mug, Kat. You always have good mugs. Well, strangely enough, Shelley said fab mug and it's because I saw that Shelley had one very similar to this. I felt such intense envy. I went out and bought one so I kind of like single white female her. <laughs> so, thank you for the inspiration, Shelley. Get your mugs though. I'm always looking for mugs and I can never find good ones. I'm just constantly on the lookout for them. I have about 30 or 40 mugs, which is far too many. I love them. I think I got you a Groot mug once. That's like the best I ever did. I, hey, yeah, I I've got it still there. Use it regularly. For my hot film <laughs> <laughs> So Karen says, wait, so the DNA evidence isn't exactly like on Chicago PD where they walk downstairs and get a DNA test in 17 seconds before the conversation ends. I am shocked, I tell you. <laughs> I know. I mean, it, to be fair, it is quicker now. But yeah, certainly in the 90s, I was disappointed when I looked at how slow everything used to be. And, and quite a lot of places used to have to send it away, like to FBI agencies and stuff. So I was like, oh, good. That was my, my way book that last five days, like lasting five years instead. So <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I can imagine so many criminals got away during the process of waiting. I think that that is why there were so many like serial killers in the 1970s because the the p procedure just people like Ted Bundy all he did was just cross into another state and then like because they didn't coordinate between states like yeah. they couldn't couldn't catch him which is terrifying. Yeah, absolute bonkers. That series, that Dharma series is something. Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet. <laughs> I'm very limited in my time that I can watch things that are about serial killers. They have to be like after bedtime. Yeah, obviously. I'd imagine. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that series either. But as we're kind of talking about things that we're consuming in the run up to Halloween, what are we all reading in spooky season? Um, well, I said, what are you reading? I set a ridiculous list for myself. And of course, I've read two of them so far. So <laughs> I'm doing really well. Um, I'm going to show you what I've read. So I've read Remina by Junji Ito. Okay. which I really enjoyed. I'd say it wasn't my favourite Junji Ito because it kind of terrified me the idea of a planet that could just consume Earth. Um, <laughs> that isn't much of a spoiler. You find out right away that that is happening. Um, so yeah, that I liked it, but it, it really frightened me. Um, 
I've also been reading um, the True Blood books, the fish, fictional hangover, so I've just finished this one. Um, and I read Friendo Lives, and that's my other book. Um, so the sequel to Clan in a Cornfield, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then I've got a huge stack, including some Stephen Graham Jones, uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw. Got another fellow UK YA author, Waking the Witch, is on my list by Rachel Burge. I just um, finished that one. It's brilliant. Really. I, I can't wait to read it and because it's really short I feel like I'm just going to be able to like binge read it mm -hmm. um so yeah and I've got let me see a Grady Hendrix 2 horror store which is I think the only one I haven't read so far um so I'm hoping to get through that this month but who knows the way I've started it's not looking good for getting all these books read how about you two have you got an ambitious list I okay so I'll go next just because I've just seen somebody say she got the book said she's reading teeth on the mist that makes me so happy Yay! my heart happy um so yeah i'm in the same boat i just got off a deadline that has been like <laughs> i was on deadline for this for the last three years constantly so i hand it in then get it back then i hand it in get it literally for three years straight <sighs> let me tell you and then straight after i have to hand in teeth in the mist 2 on october 31st so i'm like I just don't have time to read. So I've got a huge list of things I want to read. But the couple that I did read, I think Kat's going to mention this one as well, but 16 Souls, which just came yes. out. Rosie yeah. so And she also mentioned Teeth in the Mist, which I was like, thank you. But yeah, 16 Souls, really good. Love it. Waiting for my final copy. It should come in the mail. It should have been here today, actually. Um, <clears throat> and then I've got a bunch that I wanted to read. Okay, so I'm halfway through Win, Lose, Kill, Die. I know I'm super late to the party, but again, deadlines. The Whitby Witches, I want to... Oh, yes. Sounds good. Yeah, I read that a long time ago. Oh, really? Did you like it? Yeah, I did. But literally, when probably when I was a child, I read it. So you'll have to tell me if it still yeah, pops up. Like age, what, 9 to 14 or something? So it's like young, middle grade, upper... Yeah, yeah. I think I'd have probably been about maybe 10 when I read it, or 12 or something. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then I've got the Twisted Ones, which I heard is kind of spooky. And it's, I think it's about vampires. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. And I've got What Big Teeth. I'm going to read that. In terms of other ones that I want to read that I don't have here with me, I really want to read Small Favours, which I thought was a small book, but is about this thick. <laughs> it's like massive. And you you enjoyed that one, Kat. So like, I really loved it. It's like sort of Americana, folksy kind of horror. It is really oh. creepy and like a, a slow build to, you know, yeah, really good. <laughs> is it sort of did you ever read um the amalinda rube one the um the amalinda rube we are monsters is that what it's called i can't yeah, remember there are monsters and um, yeah read it is Not, this... i wouldn't say it was similar both right. brilliant but yeah i wouldn't really say it was similar because oh. it's kind of like a slightly <coughs> historical feel to small favors that there isn't really with here there are monsters but yeah okay 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 um what are some of the other ones on my list so i've got some graphic novels witches i really mm. like that one it's about a family that moves to a small town and then something in the forest is haunting them love that trope obviously <laughs> <laughs> through the woods again trees i love that one too thornhill was really good if you haven't mm. read that middle grade um one and then also another Junji Ito is the the one I love was the first one I read which was Shiver. Same and here. That was, my say, that, was that was my first one and still probably alongside Uzumaki, which Kat recommended to me. Those yeah. two are my favourites. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. But I want to. Yeah, yeah that, that, those are the ones that I'm hoping to get to anyway. And I'm like, am I though? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> when you've got to finish a book in like a couple of weeks' time, possibly. I've read they... 30 words written and I've got like two weeks to get the rest in. <laughs> I mean, the editor nothing... isn't watching. <laughs> there's nothing yeah. like pressure though to kind of inspire creativity, is the like panic writing. That's the well, thing. If you stop sleeping for long enough, you kind of get this weird, manic, crazy person energy. <laughs> I'm banking on that. <laughs> maybe not the healthiest way to go about it but if it's working <laughs> what about you Kat what are you reading um I again have got loads of stuff on my reading list um ones that I have read that I really really want to recommend obviously 16 souls which just came out today uh this is my proof copy 
I can't wait to get the, the finished one because it's so very lovely with that new cover. Um, oh. Big Bad Me by Ashley yes. Wilson. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, I think this is a real nice, like, read alongside with Mina um, because it just has, like, that the same kind of Buffy vibes to it. Oh. Um, and oh. it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, there's that one. <laughs> Um, a couple of middle grades that I haven't read yet, but I've read the uh, the first in both of these series. Um, so there's Dread uh, Fear Ground, which is the sequel to Dreadwood by Jennifer. Oh. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love Jennifer's books because they're so funny as well as being scary. Yeah. Um, and Fright Watch. Yes, uh, I love it. Laurie and Lawrence is yep. such a great author in middle grade. Oh, I need, need to read that. Um, in YA, I am currently reading Someone is Watching You by Tess James Mackey. Um, this is about two sisters um, who on a dare spend the night in an abandoned prison. But when one of the sisters goes missing, it seems as though maybe the prison isn't all that abandoned. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. Immediately sold. Yeah, I'm a little way into that one. Um I've also got um, hard copies here. The Gathering Dark, which is um, an anthology of like folk horror stories by loads of really fantastic authors. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. And with Fire in Their Blood, which is like a romancy kind of supernatural book set in a crumbling Italian city, which has amazing vibes. Graphic novels. <laughs> Oh, like crime lords in that one i think isn't it and is crime- it like vampire mafia something like that oh my gosh i didn't know that i i i'm sort of getting that vibe from the description i haven't read it yet it's on my tbr but i could be completely mistaken about that one. we've just sold like, it to me and dawn on that basis <laughs> i have it actually i, I haven't best. read it yet <laughs> both of us anytime you mention vampire like get, take my money yeah exactly <laughs> Oh, uh, Charlie has just confirmed it is Mafia. Okay. Yes, so I wasn't completely off base there. Um, I'm going to say this is on my TBR. Oh. It's this brand oh, new yes. uh, special edition Death Note, all in one edition. So I'm looking forward to awesome. that one. I've only got the first one, but I really liked it. Um, also, out today, I haven't got hard copies of these, but Gina Blacksill's Good Enough to Eat. I'm really looking forward to that. It's a uh, retelling, a fairy tale retelling of Hansel and Gretel. Um, love Gina Blacksill's books, so I'm looking forward to that one. Right. And The Other Ones by Fran Hart, which is also out today. And that is described as being Heartstopper meets The Haunting of Hill House. Um, so, okay. yeah, I think that's yeah. going to be brilliant. Yeah, I've read that one. That was very, very good. And um, I would add a little bit of Heartstopper to that description as well. Oh. It's like, I would call it Spooky Heartstopper. It's like set at autumn. Oh. It's got all those. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute and sort of spooky at the same time. I'd say more on the cute than the spooky, but yeah, it's really, really good. See, I have a bit of cute spooky at Halloween time as well. So I, like, I'm, I don't, I'm not angry at that. In case anyone wants any adult fiction, I think there were some in there, but I just remember that I had three. One was Our Wives Under the Sea, which I love. It was chosen for the Florence um, like book club, and I heard the author read a couple of lines, and just, it's like, I can't even write compared to this woman. She's amazing. And then another one is Paradise Rot, which I've heard is a bit intense, but it's skinny. It's really, really tiny. And then Lapvona, I've heard a lot about as well. I don't actually know what it's about, but everyone keeps saying it's weird and freaky. So I want to see. I want in on this. <laughs> well, we'll let you read those. And um, if it's too <laughs> scary for me, Dawn, you can tell me. <laughs> how about books? Sorry, no. How about films and TV shows? What are you guys watching this Halloween? I've been so bad because of the writing that I'm doing. I'm trying to squeeze in reading. I've hardly watched anything, but a new favourite Halloween film is Trick or Treat. Um, I discovered last year and it's been out quite a few years, but I had never watched it and I just thought it was great. Again, really cute, but evil character. That is sort of something that I really appreciate. Kev's just um, stuck his head in the room and there's a picture. I don't know whether you can see it. I'm going to have to zoom in, but this was me sitting in your panel, Dawn. Like that, that's oh, the wow. panel that you did at Yelk. I don't know oh. if there's one of us together as well. Um, oh, yeah. I, was I don't know what he's found. But... 
<laughs> oh yeah, that so that was a picture of the cupcake and the book. That, um, oh, all my little cupcakes. I got. And I don't know whether there's one of us as well. No, I can't see one of us. Um, and I am going to show you on screen. Kev has found it, so I'm not putting this on social media so you can't get too mad. But that was the one that Kev like mocked up. It's not yeah. far off, is it? No, it's that's not really close. close. Yeah. And I was like, can you just put two more girls on it? <laughs> like, <"Da-da." laughs> that's what they did. Cool. So yeah. Sorry, I can't. What you're talking about? Kev just totally derailed. <laughs> 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 said that you just watched Hocus Pocus for the first time. Charlie! I can't believe it. it's so good. What did you think of it? I need to know your first impressions. Seriously, because I can't imagine not having watched it when I was a kid. I think, like, uh, I think Kat was going to mention Hocus Pocus 2, the sequel, as one of her films. But yeah, really, really good. Um, the mid oh, I didn't watch The Midnight Club, Shelley. I haven't watched it yet. Have you guys watched it? Not no, yet. I want to, but again, I just need to do some writing for I'm allowed to watch anything else. I'm watching things in like tiny amounts at the moment. Like I watched Do Revenge, which isn't very Halloween-y, but it took me about like a week to watch it in tiny bits just because I didn't have time. Yeah. But that was fun. I can relate. <laughs> How about you, Kat? Um, yeah, I I have to admit, I watched Hocus Pocus when I was like a teenager, I think, when it came out. I didn't watch it again until I rewatched it just before Hocus Pocus 2 came out. So I had obviously in that stretch of time forgotten everything um, <laughs> apart from the memes that you see coming up all the time. So I knew the meme parts, but <laughs> I'd forgotten everything else. But yeah, watched it again and really, really loved it. And then thought, oh God, what if the sequel doesn't live up to it? Yeah. But it did. I've watched it twice now. It is so fun. Really <laughs> loved like the, the updates that they gave it, but the heart of it is still the same as the original. So I thought it was a really well done sequel. You know, I need to dress up as her for Halloween. I just need to do it. I've been avoiding it for years because I don't know how to do the teeth. But <laughs> just, I should just step into my ginger witch vibes. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a Hocus Pocus 2 chat with uh, Shelley and Tales Point Horror Book Club. Um, I, that's on the 13th for anybody that wants to watch it. And I yeah. will be doing a cosplay of one of the characters from the film. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to see which <laughs> Excited. I might just dress I'm not in the chat, but I might just dress up to watch it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you watching, Kat? Um, so yeah, I think one that I always tend to recommend, because I've been um doing some like uh, school events and stuff recently and been asked which films that I like to watch. So one that I always recommend now is Host, which is a Netflix film. It's sixty minutes long and it's set during the pandemic when a group of people get together to do like an online seance so they're all in different locations but doing it like this basically um and one of them doesn't take it seriously and angers the evil spirit that they summon so things start to go very very horribly wrong and it is really really good considering it's only an hour long they pack a lot into that film yeah. really enjoyed it I couldn't look away, honestly. And it was, it came out during the height of the whole, like everyone was on Zoom. So it, it looked so familiar because it just looks like you're watching a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. And one that I'm really looking forward to watching, I think this is going to be very divisive, is um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch that. I mean... <laughs> I wasn't like a massive Winnie the Pooh fan when I was a kid, so it's not destroying my childhood or anything. But I think this is just, just going to be bonkers. I'm so <laughs> to childhood, but I'm here for it. I'm like, <laughs> do it. Is that the one that's got the Stranger Things guy in it? I don't know if it has the. Stranger He's doing some sort of horror film. I can't remember what that is. Oh no, is he in the Santa one? Where he is he in like a Santa horror film that's going out or something? Oh yes, yes. Um, God, what's his name? The one that plays Hopper. Um, he's in the Santa one. Yeah, Shelley will be able to jump on and tell us <laughs> if she really likes it. God, Shelley, what's he called? Um, I knew he was in something where I went, hang on, what? I can't remember if it was Winnie the Pooh or Santa, you know. There you go. Oh, but I just actually, now that you mentioned the um, Stranger Things cast, I just watched, um, have you seen the Stephen King adaptation of Mr. Harrigan's phone? Oh, yes! Because uh, one of the young lads from Stranger Things is in that, and Donald Sutherland plays like this sort of slightly evil mentor figure who dies and then communicates with him by smartphone um, <laughs> so he's like haunting your smartphone i think it's um, the from it isn't it the kid from it not stranger things yeah i think so <laughs> it's a young man 
I don't know. <laughs> the guy, the, the kid who, Will, or Bill, in It. Yeah. Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> Love that. It was great. Oh, but the weirdest thing happened when I was watching that film. It wasn't really the scariest film that I watched lately. But as I was watching it, my uh, tablet, which is just set up on my desk in my living room, uh, as I'm talking to you now, and towards the end of the film, I just heard this voice across the room say, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow a voice in the film had activated Siri, which has <laughs> never happened ever in the entirety of the time that I owned this iPad. I didn't even know it was switched on. So somehow activated it and asked it to do something weird. It was. Um, it was Mr. Harrington, obviously. I Mr. was so Harrigan. hard the first time you told me that. I nearly peed my pants. It was so... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just so like, this, this film wasn't scary until now. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder, I still want to know what the command is that it heard that it can't do. If anyone knows how to look up the Siri history thing <laughs> after that'd be it, awesome. Yeah, let us know because I'm intrigued what it couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> do you two have like a favorite horror film of all time? Oh, I do. But I'll you go first, Amy. Mine's really obvious. If I feel like watching a horror film and it needs to be super comforting, I either watch Scream or I Know What You Did Last Summer or Urban Legend. Like, they're the trifecta. Depending on what specific mood I'm in, like, I will watch one of those three. And I think Trick or Treat, I've maybe added to the list now as well. But yeah, those three just, I don't know what it is about all the blood and murder, but I feel really good when I'm watching those films. <laughs> like, I know most of the lines. Like, I know, like, every little nuance of, like, you know, the, even, like, the cast stories and stuff. Like, I just want to know everything about those films. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, the, the Fear Street films are a good call as well. Actually, I really enjoyed watching those. Shelley and I did like a buddy watch because it was I don't know if it was during the pandemic, but we watched them together like on oh, Zoom. That was really good. I love that um, party sort of thing. Well, yeah, yeah. So we watched it um, with our two Kevs because we're both married to a Kev <laughs> and um, and Shelley's son. And yeah, that was really good. Um, but yeah, so I recommend those three, which you've probably all already seen, but they're just my happy place horror films. How about you two? Yeah, I think you can tell a lot from a person by what their comfort horror is. Yeah. My comfort horror, I've got a few. Um, the first horror I ever, ever watched was Prince of Darkness, the 80s one. And I just feel great when I watch that. <laughs> <laughs> also another one, In the Mouth of Madness. Also John Carpenter. Absolutely fab. But then um, the other two that are my comfort watches are the original Candyman and yes. It. I really love yes. it. Yes. I think I saw the original It when I was five, so it's like super old, but I loved it. In terms of my favourite horror ever, probably a dark song, which is, I've talked about it before, but it's um, a British horror where a woman who's grieving um, at, at the loss of her son goes to a remote house in Wales and hires a shaman to do this abramelin ritual so she can unshackle the world from the house and call on her guardian angels and in order to do this she has to go through this elaborate ritual where she summons and traps different demons in this like word square until she can finally meet her guardian angel and ask for one favor and I just love it it's only a two-person cast but it's just chef's kiss the other one is The Silenced, which is an Asian horror about a girl who goes to a boarding school where weird stuff happens. So highly recommend those as well. How about you, Kat? Well, I do have like a real thing for sci-fi horror. So Aliens has got to be obviously one of the all-time classic comfort horrors as we're talking comfort horrors. Oh, so comforting, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pitch Black um and event horizon i love event horizon oh it's so twisted but absolutely love it um also the original ring the ringu um yeah absolutely loved that one and i don't think anything has scared me as much since i watched that one it, I do. it was just something in how it was filmed and yeah it was just amazing that one so yeah one of my all-time favorites as well as the babadook obviously, because I would say that that has been one that really influenced me when I was writing Harrow Lake. So I have to throw that in. Yeah, Babadook, amazing, amazing film. Except yeah, Kev's saying the, the Descent as well. I always forget. Sorry. <laughs> you sorry, what were you saying, Dawn? I just said the kid was super annoying. I just wanted him to shut up. 
horror kids generally like they fall into a couple of categories like you really want them to live or they're so creepy that you just like they send chills all over your skin you're like send in the clowns <laughs> yeah exactly I'll, I'll sort the clowns out it's fine i've got that covered oh <laughs> uh, yeah kev was saying about the descent that i always forget to recommend that and that really scared me the first time i watched mm -hmm. it the idea of being trapped underground is bad enough and then being trapped underground with terrifying like darkness creatures is just like <laughs> It's, yeah, awful. Even the thought of it now. Thanks for that image, Kev. Not long before you go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I love the ending. So good. Isn't there a yeah. scene? I, I feel like, yeah, I think there might be, and I think I've only watched that one once, which suggests I didn't like it as much as the first one because I can't really remember what it was about, but... It's Sorry. kind of like this, the same sort of premise, but they go back, I think, if I'm remembering right. I have they all die? There's one survivor. Oh, right, okay. But I think one of the ones that she thought had died hadn't oh uh, okay i have to go just to see yeah so my next question for you guys is do you dress up for halloween i know you do cat uh, you amy and if you do what's your favorite halloween costume I don't often and um partially because I think that if I got dressed up and then Nathan my toddler woke up I would terrify him can you imagine if I'd got like full like it clown makeup on or something and I was like oh I'm just gonna put you back to bed now um so that's part of, yeah that's part of the reason recently but yeah I was thinking that prior to children even I didn't and I think what we used to do was like go to absolutely horrifying places like we once did like a warehouse event where they'd set up all this like scary stuff in it and it looked like a scene from a horror film when you drove up to this like deserted warehouse and we've done things like you know where like they do like all scary stuff in a cornfield like that's the kind of thing where I, I haven't dressed up but I've like just immersed myself in horror so yeah idea we should do something like that as a group like yes a please something <laughs> how about you Kat um I think one of my favorites that I've done so far was when I dressed up as like a female Beetlejuice I really yes. like that and Beetlejuice is one of my favourite characters anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like that one. I also did a pretty good devil last year. It was like full red paint everywhere. <laughs> yes. Everywhere. My bathroom looked like, you know, the last scene of Carrie. It was... <laughs> I... <laughs> but yeah, it looked good. That's the important thing. <laughs> I thought that was a filter when I first saw it. I was like convinced that you hadn't gone full red and I thought, no, she has, she's done it. I love the reel that you did where you were like authors during the rest of the year versus authors during. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite was last year, either the Cheshire Cat or the Mad Hatter. That was quite fun. It was the first time I'd worn contacts, which was super easy and brilliant, except for the last day when I couldn't get the, the one of them out. That was a bit, oh. <laughs> like, you know, my eye like, why? <laughs> Was like, yeah, you did. You did a real good collection of Alice in Wonderland characters yeah, last year. I like that. I know it's so sad that I'm on deadline because I would have done such epic things. But I'm gonna do one thing on Halloween, and then that will have to do <laughs> to celebrate handing in the draft. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so, do you two have any other Halloween traditions as we are approaching the big day? Um, I've started like children once, so things like um, going to oh, somebody said they're going as Mina for Halloween. That's oh, yay! <laughs> that's an, that's been another nice thing actually. Seeing people dressed as Mina is really cool. Like in the check shirts, like with t-shirts underneath. People have come to meet me like dressed as Mina. So that's fun. I, I love that. Please send pictures of that. I would love to see it. And yeah, your friend has to obviously dress up as a star. That's only the supportive thing. <laughs> um but yeah as i was saying um my halloween traditions are now like pumpkin picking and like going to cute like halloween searches like there is a cornfield one which i find the cornfield quite terrifying and my toddler's like oh let's find the pumpkins in the cornfield and i'm like thinking as long as we don't get murdered um but yeah so mine are all like really wholesome now i've kind of put the horror on pause for a little bit yeah understandable I want to do pumpkin picking. I've never done that in real life. Kat, next time when you grow all those pumpkins, I'm just going to come to your house to do pumpkin picking. <laughs> yeah, we do manage to grow like one pumpkin every year. Usually this year we failed, unfortunately. But yeah, we grow one pumpkin <laughs> and carve it. That's like one of my life goals, to grow my own pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I mean, I've taken to... I mean, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I've started decorating like probably as much as I do at Christmas. So I've got, you know, like a series of haunted houses and stuff around the place. I love that so much. It feels so festive. Also the tree is the the t teeth tree from your book, right? The burn tree, yes. Yeah, that's it, yeah. 
I don't have any traditions except for, I like to get really cozy around Halloween. So what I normally do is I, I pull off all the sofa cushions and I make like a little fort. I've done this like only twice. So it's like a twice tradition, <laughs> a little fort. And then we just watch horror movies with a bunch of snacks. That sounds perfect. <laughs> Honestly, if I can muster the energy this year, I might have to do it and take pictures because it's so cozy in there. <laughs> I kind of want to do that. Maybe oh. I can show like some like spooky film. Like, you know, those kids spooky films. Like I can probably get away with that during the day and like make some like thoughts. Nightmare Before Christmas is something I tend to watch at Halloween to prepare myself for Christmas. I just love that. So maybe you could put that on. There's stuff from that all over my house, so my toddler <laughs> already knows like who Jack and Sally are. He's quite familiar, so yeah, maybe that won't be too scary. Absolutely. And actually, that's a book we should have recommended, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. Yes. Like, oh, I love her. She's such a sweetheart. But yeah, I'm sure everyone has got that book already because it's like the number one best-selling book of like <laughs> forever. But yeah, again, another book you should get if you haven't. This was fun. I mean, what I've taken away from this is... Um, a, I think we need a third Mina book. I mean, it's an F. I demand it, basically. B, yeah. we need to do some kind of reading retreat where we can actually sit down and read the books that we have on our lists. And yeah. B, we need to go on some kind of like spooky Halloween adventure a la Amy's Halloween tradition. Okay, so let's do this. Next Halloween, let's make sure none of us are on a deadline. <laughs> let's do something really spooky for a weekend. Yeah. And maybe finish with horror movies, uh, you know, in Cat's Pumpkin Patch or something. Yes. I do. With one pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> I've, we've got a couple of comments here. I don't want to leave anyone hanging. Um, that lad, Dex, said, OMG, you're my favourite author. I loved Harrow Lake. It made me want to start writing. Yay! Oh, that's so Thank cool. you. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think um, Charlie said something as well. Oh, I'm going to dress up as a YA author because you <laughs> write such terrifying. That would probably be just like sweats, a messy <laughs> sleep crusted in the eyes, drool, yeah, and a coffee in the hand. <laughs> some some horror movie t-shirt and horror movie yeah. mug. That's all you need. Yeah. Exactly. I think I've got everything. If do you guys see any more comments or questions? No, I think that we kind of tackle most of its own lines. Thank you. That was really fun. I enjoyed that, you two. Thank you very much for joining us, Amy. If you guys have any recommendations for books or films, do just message us because we always want them. And thank you for joining us so much. We'll see you again soon. And don't forget Focus Focus 2 chat as well. Yes, on the 30th. 30th. Mwah! Thanks for joining. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.